Chapter 30 It is my job, as his hero twin, to distract the monster long enough for Nayanez Gani to fulfil the teachings of our ancestors. He has fought the battle of a warrior, yet I am only a spirit, dead at birth to the real world. Grandfather says we are linked forever, always twins. He says that through my brother and his things, I will find a way to distract the monster. But there is nothing of my brother's close enough to make a difference, except his broken weapon and his ammunition belt. I stare at them for a moment. The ammunition belt hangs off a tree limb. The broken gun is wedged between the branches. I stare, and then I understand. A fresh wind breathes life into the fire, and the flames reach up towards the ammunition belt like a grasping hand. Corporal Enoch Nakai, lying on his back on the hard lava rock, stared up into the creature's eyes as time moved in slow motion. The evil in those eyes was greater than he had ever imagined. The eyes narrowed. They were bright, and in their darkness he could see his own reflection. Tiny, small, insignificant. The monster stared at him, and Nakai stared back. He didn't blink. He knew he was going to die. He knew his head was going to end up in the creature's next camp. A trophy. He would be nothing more than a trophy. The pistol in his left hand was going to end this quickly. Nakai knew that the instant he went to raise the gun, he would lose his head. But at least he would die trying, right to the end. Grandfather would be proud. The creature stepped slightly closer. The smell of rotted human flesh was overwhelming. The monster's armour was covered with green blood. Its breath wheezed in its throat. The creature was hurt too. Nakai could only hope that it was dying. It bent over him. With a snap, sharp blades extended from the armour on the back of the alien's wrists. Time slowed even more. As Nakai watched, the creature started to raise its hand to strike. Suddenly, time moved at a normal pace. Gunshots filled the air, bullets ricocheting off lava rock. Arm poised in the air, the creature looked around at the fire and the valley. Was the colonel coming? Could Nakai really be saved by the cavalry at the last moment? He doubted his luck would last that long. Then he realised in the same instant what was happening. The fire had gotten to his ammunition belt in the valley. The heat had set off the powder in the shells. His assailant was turned slightly, so Nakai brought up the pistol, taking dead aim at the face of evil. Then, without a fraction of a moment's hesitation, he pulled the trigger. The gun kicked slightly in his left hand, but the first two shots found their mark squarely in the soft area just above the creature's eyes. Nakai kept firing, pounding bullet after bullet into that ugly face. One shot entered the mouth as the monster opened his jaws to scream. Another shot blew out its right eye, sending green blood spraying everywhere. The creature staggered back a step, then stood there, staring with one-eyed disbelief at Nakai. Nakai sat up, and, with careful aim, put the last two shots from his pistol directly into the monster's forehead. The creature took another step away, and then, like a giant tree, swayed a moment before falling over backward. The body rolled over once on the rock before coming to rest on its back, its remaining eye staring at the smoke-filled sky. Nakai stood. His legs were shaky. He stared at the creature for a moment, then at the pistol in his left hand. Then, just for good measure, he aimed the empty gun at the corpse and started pulling the trigger, letting the clicking sounds fill the air 
along with the crackling sounds of the fire below. Click, 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 click. He just kept pulling the trigger, not believing the monster was really dead. A minute later, Tilden gently took the empty gun from his hand and led him to a boulder. I think you've got him, Corporal, Tilden said quietly. Nakai looked up into Tilden's face. It was as if the private was a hundred miles away, talking to him through a long tunnel. He didn't even know where the man had come from, only that he was glad to see him. Are you sure? Nakai asked. Are you dead sure? Tilden stared, and then, after a moment, he said, You truly are Nayanez Gani. At that moment, Nakai finally realized what he had done, and what he had become. He was a hunter. He was a monster slayer. The past had become the present. He now understood his heritage. He was Navajo. And he had not become Nayanez Gani alone. He looked upward at the clear sky. Thank you, grandfather, he said.